And within the team, each of those riders will have different roles, and it's up to them to be sure that they blend their skills and talents together to produce one of them as the winner of the Tour de Trump. Well, the 7-Eleven team is the team everyone in America recognizes, and yet they, too, have an international look. Andy Hampton has won international races, many of them, but he loves America, loves racing in America, comes back every chance he gets. the quintessential All-American, but now they're joined by a Brit. Obviously, the pressure's on us to do a really good ride being an American team. And we're, so we've got our best team here. On, on a team, you've just got to help the rider with the best chance of winning. And the more people who do that, the more the chance of the best rider's got to win. On the right, Dag Otto Lauritsen of Norway has been with 7-Eleven for years, and he overcame an injury. In uh, in 1980, I was in uh, I was working as a policeman and uh, did some parachute jumping and uh, had an accident, very serious accident, and my knee was uh, very badly injured and I was three weeks, three months in hospital and I was walking on crutches for almost half a year, and the doctor said I would have a stiff leg for the rest of my life, so that's why I started cycling for recuperation. So much for doctors and Moritzen likes the freedom with 7-Eleven. In, in this team it's very democratic all the riders get asked about things and uh, the director is not very military and it suits me perfect and i think everybody on the team is very happy that way any prediction how 7-eleven will do in the tour de trump i think we will win the race one of us well not yet approaching now eastern pennsylvania home of larry holmes former heavyweight boxing champ enters Easton, Pennsylvania, some four minutes in arrears of a breakaway group. A trio out in front. The large field content to let him stay there. On the left, it's Ink Luberding, 36-year-old veteran for the Panasonic team. But the breakaway was started by this stocky young man from England, Paul Curran. Dog out of Lauritsen of the 7-Eleven team, and Luberding went up to join him. The three have stayed away with only 20 miles yet to go. Paul Curran and Dog Otto Lauritsen. Three men alone against a field of over a hundred. So far, the three have had the best of it. Working together very smoothly. Two experienced veteran professionals, Dog Otto Lauritsen of the 7-Eleven team and Inc. Luberding. Paul Curran has labored in the amateur ranks in England until this year. His built-in team is a brand new one and has let some of the English join the cash ranks. His awkward style is a contrast to the long, lean look of Luberding and Lawrenson. And then it's the final corner with Pink Luberding of Panasonic coming out of the turn first. He glances back and Lawrenson is unable to answer. A half a wheel is enough. Pink Luberding, the winner for the day. He accepts the award and the cheers of the crowd. They're witnessing a true champion on a good day. <laughs> Results for this stage, Luberdink, Lauritsen, and Curran. Davis Finney in sixth. Overall, a reversal. Second in the sprint, Lawrence but the first now in the GC. This must have been a very, very satisfying ride for you today. Yeah, it was a good uh, good ride for the whole team, 7-Eleven, and uh, I'm happy to be se second today, but uh, the most important is to have the latest jersey. You stayed away for almost two hours. Was there any question in that lead group of three that you could or couldn't stay away? No, uh, in the beginning I was a little bit worried, but I thought if we go there, there was rolling hills, and before the last climb, we thought we could stay away to the last climb, and then maybe a little group should come up. But it looks like they was uh, they didn't go hard enough behind, and uh, we stayed away all the time. You are 32 years old. Luberdink is 36. Kern is 28. That's an old group. Was this a race for wise men as opposed to young men? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm 32, but I feel young in my body, and I started cycling when I was 24, so I think I still have a lot of years to go. Will 7-Eleven ride for you now? Are you the man that they want to protect in this race? Yeah, I guess so. I'm, uh, I'm in the lead, so they will definitely control the race for me. 
All right, I got a Lawrence, and he comes to a town with a great amusement park, but getting here was the best We're ride of his life. Now by two members of the 7-Eleven team, the race leader, Dagato Larson of Norway, and Davis Finney, winner of today's stage. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. The question, obviously, to you, Dag, can you hold the lead through Sunday? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we did a good uh, work today, all of us. The team is working very strong for me, and I gained some seconds on Father Harden instead of losing 30, 40 seconds as I did before. You have a time trial Sunday, 24 miles. You lost significant time to Van der Arden yesterday. Can you do better in the longer time trial? Normally, I'm better in the longer time trial, and yesterday I had bad legs. In the morning and in the afternoon, today I felt much better, so I am confident for a Sunday. Davis, I have to ask you, I know sometimes it seems like the, the fate of Western civilization rests on your shoulders <laughs> until you get a stage win. You have to be a little bit relieved now. Oh, I feel so good, believe me. Believe me, Brian, I, uh, it's, been a, it's been a long, hard race, and uh, I just wasn't quite getting it. It was coming and coming in second, third, fourth, but uh, today felt so good, and, and I think all of us on 7-Eleven felt just really strong today. I mean, yesterday was a bad day, and uh, we just put it behind ourselves, and boom, we went out there, and, and, and it was a real morale boost for the whole team. Dog, two days to go, and I think, you know, with just a few miles left, uh, time is running out for Eric Vander Arden and certainly uh, Frank Luberding as well, the Panasonics. What, what can they do in the Criterium on, uh, on tomorrow? Uh, Panasonic is a very strong team, and they've done uh, very good so far. So, of course, uh, if Van der Harden wins tomorrow, it takes 30 new seconds. But I think my team is strong, too. So the whole 7-Eleven team is going to try to avoid Van der Harden from winning. Let me ask both you gentlemen your opinions of the Tour de Trump. Uh, it is the first truly European-style stage race with only one criterium and one circuit race. Would you like to see this race continue here? Would you like to see more of them in the U.S., Don? Definitely. I love to race in America. I love the crowd here, and uh, this race has been very good. As Greg LeMond said, it's the first-class race for us riders. Davis? Excellent race. Unbelievable. For a first-time event, the response has been fabulous. The, the crowds and the support and the media support, it's, it's just been wonderful. I, uh, I, I don't think we, we ever expected anything like this, and uh, there's no question that we'd like to see this just get bigger and better in the future. Well, hopefully it will. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Do well tomorrow and Sunday, and uh, we hope to talk with you again next May at the Tour de Trump. <laughs> All right, the American... And that puts the pressure on this man, Dagato Lauritsen, the race leader. You recall his lead over Van der Arden is only 1 minute 39 seconds. Van der Arden in third place. And Van der Arden has said to Lauritsen, be this time if you can. is a strong rider with indomitable will. He continues to surprise the critics. Doctors said he couldn't ride professionally. Look at what he's doing. They said he wasn't a climber, but he won a mountain stage in the Tour de France two years ago. Is there any end to the surprises Lauritsen will show them? Here's one Norwegian who hopes not. wavering a little on the road. The guardrail on his left. The time trial is all about pain, finding a level you can withstand, and then going a little harder. Lauritsen's team has sheltered him in the weak stages. Van der Arden has caught up every day. Now Lauritsen is on his own. Is he worthy of the race lead? Coming up the final straightaway, we find out. And the answer is no, 1926. Van der Arden has beaten him soundly, but Lauritsen does still hold the race lead. But look